The next menu over, which is clearly a brand new menu on ICE 1.3, is the guest access. So the whole guest section got pulled out, what used to be under the administration section, and Cisco made it a dedicated menu for it. And this is to basically simplify the process of configuring guest and sponsor with, uh, by default comes with a lot of built-in template that you can use right off the box without a whole lot of configuration. And without going into too much detail, the configuration steps are different from the previous version, but the concepts stays the same with the ability to do things like single click device registration, sponsor guest, or even self provisioning guest. Okay, so those features are still available. You just now have to configure it a little differently. And just to click into that, just to give you an idea, the page that you see right off the bat is to provide you with a quick setup instruction as far as what you have to configure to get your guest flow or guest process up and running. And here we have a guest portal, guest types, sponsor groups, and sponsor portal. And those are the things that you need to configure. And we have several videos that are going to be dedicated just for guest access configuration. We'll go through the configuration steps in more detail, but just to give you an idea of some of the guest enhancement features, let's use, uh, click on guest portals and use a sponsor guest portal here as an example. Actually, let's just use self-register since it actually contains more options under there. So click edit. Okay, so some of the cool new features are now available. Let's go through these and see if we can pick some of these out. So things like Red limiting fail locking attempts. You can throttle fail locking attempts if you want. You have things like SMS capability if you want to send the account information to your guest using SMS. The ability to include the AUP page pretty much anywhere. Allow guests to lock in after a successful account creation directly. Ability to automatically register guest device. And this is to add guest MAC address as part of the endpoint. So later on when the guest trying to return to the network, they don't have to go through the authentication even after the session has expired. And specifically for self-register guest, we can also force them to have their request approved by someone. So here requires self-register guest to be approved by one of the sponsor before they will get their account. Like I said, we'll go through each of these individual options in more detail when we actually configure the guest service. We also have the portal page customization, ability to preview the portal page as you spend time tweaking these parameters, ability to customize the portal using the Cascade style sheet or CSS. Ability to use the variables. You can include certain custom user information as part of your guest portal. And the portal customization support both the desktop version and the mobile version. And you can click the preview, for example, to see the resulting guest portal. All right, so that's pretty much all I want to talk about right now under guest access. Next, let's go under the administration, starting with the system and deployment. So the changes that has been made with ICE 1.3 is the profiling configuration. These probes were not enabled, but in this version, some of the probes are enabled by default, although not all of them are enabled. So you still have to come in here and make sure that you've got all the probes that you need enabled, but at least some of them are enabled by default. Okay, next is the licensing. The licensing structure has now changed. What used to be base plus and advanced in IS 1.2, now you've got base plus Apex. So the base is pretty much the same, which is professional license that required by all the endpoints. So it's always going to be used. The plus license now is used with BYOD profiling, endpoint protection services, and PX grids, and it's no longer overlaps with Apex. What used to be advanced includes what's included in plus, but now Apex is actually a separate license on its own. That provides the capability for you to do MDM posture. So if you need, for example, to perform posture, which is included in Apex and profiling, which is included in the plus, then you have to buy both Apex and plus. Also on the wireless side of things, what used to be a wireless and wireless upgrade licenses, now it's become a mobility, which is basically base plus and Apex 
features combined, but just to be used for wireless and VPN. And now to replace the wireless upgrade, you have the mobility upgrade, which is pretty much the same thing. Just to, if you want to start using wire authentication, if you already own the mobility license. So you can see here, since this is the, we are running on the evaluation license, we got all of our wireless VPN and wire enable. You can track the exact license usage over time on this page, as well as if you want to install additional license, you can do it right here as well. And below is your product information that you normally need to register your PAC key when you're trying to register your licenses. Next, let's go over to certificate, which is another one of the features that's been heavily revamped with the addition of the internal certificate authority. For the most part, the layout is completely different now, but the functionality is the same. Again, this is to support the internal CA. You can now centrally manage all of your certificates. Not only that, the certificate store is replicated to your secondary nodes or other PSN nodes. You can also manage their identity certs from the admin nodes. And you will see this in the next videos when we start doing the certificate installations and distributed deployment. And you can see this uh, bottom section here with the certificate authority. So now ICE can act as its own standalone internal certificate authority. So the concept is the ICE policy service node will act as a subordinate CA that will basically sign the client certificate. So you no longer need to rely on an external SCP server to do that since all the client certificate will be issued by the I server. Now the whole BYOD deployment can be self-contained. And we're going to have a dedicated video just to talk about how to configure the internal CA on ICE, right? Locking and maintenance buttons or menus are pretty much the same. So let's go over to backup and restore. What is new here is the ability to export policy config under the policy export tab. So what you can do now is to export the policy configuration in a doc SML format, but this is only for documentation purpose only and not really for a backup purposes since there's no way for you to import the policy back using this particular feature. Okay, it's just a better way of documenting what policies you have to configure. And for example, if you want to send it to your colleagues or somebody else to review, then you can do that just by a click of a button. No longer need to do a screen capture per se. Admin access is pretty much the same. So skip over to settings under the alarm settings. We got some new alarms. And again, this has been added just because ICE 1.3 has additional features and there are additional alarms that goes with it. At the bottom, we have our SMS gateway. This is where you can add, and by default, it comes with a commonly used provider, things like AT&T, and this is obviously for US, Sprint, T-Mobile. And if you have additional provider that's not listed here, then you can add it yourself. And this is for the most part for sending out guest login accounts. All right, next let's go under the identity management. Identities and groups are pretty much the same. What has also been changed significantly is the Active Directory integration. And this is another long-awaited feature, which is the ability to integrate with multiple disjoint domain. In the previous version, all of the AD domain must have bidirectional trust. Otherwise, you need to use LDAP as a workaround if the domains are not trusted. But now you no longer need to do that since eyes are now capable of integrating with multiple disjoint or untrusted domain up to 50 domain join points. That is definitely a lot of domain to join. And we'll definitely have a dedicated video just for this. Identity source sequences are pretty much the same. Let's get over to the settings. What's new here is the endpoint purge. And what this means is the profiled endpoints do not need to stay forever now in the database. Since you have a capability to create a policy to purge endpoint based on different conditions, you can see here right off the bat we've got the purge policies for guest endpoint and register endpoint. Register one is for the BYOD and the default condition is if the account is in the database greater than 30 days, then it will get purged. So this way your endpoint database gets regularly clean up. And this will also becomes very handy to remove guest endpoints to force them out of the system and have them re-encounter the login page. So you can use this feature right here along with the guest access and 
achieve certain user experience. Next, let's go over to the network resources, network devices, device groups, external radius, radius server sequence, and all of these are pretty much the same. The new menu is being introduced is external MDM. What used to be under the administration menu directly has now been moved under the network resources. It's not actually a new feature or anything. The menu option has just been re relocated. Okay, then we have our device portal management, which is also a completely new section. And this is to give you ability to brand and customize the content on a non-guest web pages. And this including the blacklist portal, BYOD portal, Client provisioning portal, and this is when you go, you force the user to go through the posture agent download. You got MDM portal as well as the My Devices portal. Okay, not only that, you can brand and customize them. For some of these, you can actually create additional or multiple web pages as well. For example, what used to be only a single page for My Devices portal, you can actually create multiple My Devices portal now and then have it mapped to a specific URL. Next is another brand new features in ICE 1.3, which is PX Grid Services. And by default, it's not enabled. That's why we're not seeing anything here. So we have PX Grid Services menu, as well as the PX Grid Identity Mapping menu. So for the PX Grid Services, it's just a, what's this going to consider a unified framework for ICE to share and exchange contextual information with external client system. Whether that the system is another Cisco products or a third party. So PX Grid just provide a whole ecosystem and medium to exchange information. And we'll look into this a little bit more detail in the PX Grid video. Okay, for feed services is the way for ICE to obtain the latest updates such as device profile from Cisco directly from online and it stays pretty much the same. So it should always have this enabled as we do here. As part of the PX Grid capability is PX Grid identity mapping. And this is to provide a non 802.1x user to IP mapping information specifically from Windows domain lock-in by integrating with AD. If that sounds familiar to you, then you probably have dealt with the products like a Cisco Context Directory Agent or CDA, which does pretty much the same thing, but now that feature is built into the iServer. And I think we might have gone through all the menu options right here. So some of the other features is included in ICE 1.3 that has not really been covered is things like the OVA installation. Actually, we talked about in the last videos, OVAs or files are now available for you to use uh, to install your ICE VM in addition to the conventional .iso. So I think this is pretty much a good time to go back to our release notes and see if we have covered everything that's listed here. We talked about guest enhancement already in user web interface, notification, email, SMS, ability to configure the guest portal. We got the guest rest API. If you want to integrate with some external system, we got the sponsor portal. We talked about the non guest portal customization. We talked about uh, internal certificate authority. Ability to support OVA file installation on the VM. This is something that we have already covered in the last video when we performed our ICE 1.3 installation. We did talk about the PX Grid services and PX Grid identity mapping, as well as the AnyConnect Unify agent, Multi Forest Active Directory. Some of the authorization enhancement, we talked about the ability to do a 802.1x chaining with central web auth. Some of the serviceability enhancement we have also already touched upon. Licenses, base plus Apex, and mobility, mobility upgrade. We're already showing you on the licensing page. I also have some log file enhancement to make a log file more readable, as well as including some log file rotation for better keeping. Ability to perform right click in some of the field under the live authentication and live sessions. And we did show you that to perform endpoint debug, modify collection filter, and bypass suppression filter for an hour. Additional reports and alarms. We already talked about that as well. There's some VLAN chain support draft for mobile devices. Not really uh, too much of a concern, but you might want to make yourself aware of this. There's some upgrade enhancement. 
that's been added when you're trying to perform upgrade, things like resource check for hard disk CPU speed, SHA-256 checksum, make sure files are valid, monitoring database object check, enhanced show text support, and database enhancement. And here are some of the other enhancements, live log, live session filter, endpoint debug log, export policy, configuration, XML, we already talked about that, bypass suppression for endpoint, we talked about that as part of the right clicking, filter support bundle, centralized certificate man management, we talked about that as well. And it sounds like they might have rebranded the endpoint protection service and now it's known as adaptive network control. All right, and then finally we have the support for Mac OS X 10.10. Hope and make a note for those who needs the FIPS support. It's the ICE 1.3 does not support FIPS mode. All right, so that's pretty much covered the new features and where they're located on the ICE web interface for ICE 1.3. And that is pretty much what our video series is all about. We're going to go through each of those individual features in more details and show you all of the configurations that you need to get those up and running. From this point forward, so we're going to start dealing with the configuration on ICE. So brace yourself since we're going to have another jam-packed video series for you guys. All right, and that wraps up our videos on ICE 1.3, new features, and web interface updates. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.